Well guys, today we're talking all about course play in Farming Simulator 25! That's right, we've got course play for Farm Sim 25 running right now. We're going to talk about all the basic features of it to get you guys started so you know what's going on because it's an absolutely great mod for Farm Sim 25 that has been around for quite a while for the other previous Farming Simulator games. We're going to dive into this and figure out how it all works and how they all work together. This is great. Oh boy. Please don't hit me. Yeah, run. All right, so we've got a simple pea harvest to go take care of, and we're going to try it with an all-new course play for Farming Simulator 25. Let's bounce on into our pea harvester here. Now, of course, up at the top right, you see that we have course play uh, available to us. The warning, that's the warning area, I guess, of the screen we're going to call that. Uh, let's take a look at, quickly, our controls, because you get a new control section, of course, with a lot of mods you'll see. Let's go and take a look at our controls in-game. Looking in the controls menu, if we scroll down, we'll find our mods. It goes in uh, alphabetical. We've got vehicle, vehicle, crane, placeables, game. Where is it? Where is course play? Right there we go. So there we go. We have our new control options for course play, as you can see. Uh, we have a couple debug options at the top. And then to open the mini GUI is the delete key. Start, stop, driver, control H, and generate course is control G. If you want to add some other ones, there's a couple extra other options you can assign to your heart's content, but that's usually, to be honest with you, delete key is the one I pretty much use exclusively. So let's bounce back into our harvester. Now, on top of the delete key, if you right click your mouse button, that's another way of bringing up the menu. So the menu will come up there. Also, note that this window is movable, and actually, so is the warning label up in the top right there. It usually blocked off part of my enhanced vehicle mod. But uh, as we found in a live stream the other day, this can be moved, and I did not know that, which is great. So it kind of opens things up a little bit more, and you can move your windows around, so it looks a little bit nicer for you. So looking at our menu, we're running course play 8.0.0.0. Across the top, we, have, of course, have an X, which will get rid of that screen, or we can bring it back up with a right click or delete again. And then this button right here, this brings up kind of our, our main menu. And it defaults to the general information and the tutorial settings. So if you have any questions on how things are running, you can go through all of these tabs here and it will give you a better description if you want to find out more information, which is very cool. I mean, a very well done manual on how to run course play. Moving down, we have what piece of equipment we're currently running. And if we click on that, of course, you go to the vehicle settings option for course play, which is kind of cool. Uh, you get a whole bunch of settings here. You can change to your heart's content once again. Uh, like I said, open HUD with mouse that is currently activated by default. You can change all that on or off. Uh, you, there's a bunch of settings here you can change, obviously, depending on how you want to use it. Read through each one. It gives you a short description on the right-hand side, what each one of these do, which is also a nice feature they've added in this time. Back to our main mini menu. Uh, to the right of the vehicle, we have the record button, which will record a path that you can design so you can start driving, kind of like what auto drive does to some degree. Uh, mostly used for bunker work, basically. It's more of an advanced feature. We're not going to be covering that in this particular video, but there are options for that. So that's what that does. Underneath that, with the type of work we're going to be doing, of course, field work right now. Uh, this here will actually open up the map so you'll be able to start generating courses. Below that, we have our which waypoint we want to start at. So we have nearest first and last waypoint. You can change that uh, depending on where you are. If you happen to stop halfway through a, some field work, for instance. We're going to put that to first waypoint for now. Underneath, we have the no course. So that's going to be the course that's, that you're going to eventually generate here. And uh, that'll show up. And we'll go through that right away here. But we're going to keep on moving down a little bit further. The working width, where we have a 3.6 meter width on this particular combine or this harvester. You can change that if you would like. You can manually adjust those. And then the tool offset, this particular combine or this harvester ha does have a bit of an offset. So if we click out of side of this, you can see... There is a little bit of an offset to the right, the left-hand side, looking at it, the right-hand side if you're inside the combine. Uh, so it is taking that into account. Those all auto-generated. So course play is taking that into account. So that's the basics for the mini menu. Now let's go make up, let's go take a look at the main menu. Uh, there's a couple different ways. Of course, we could, said we could do this. We could go up through the help menu. We could click on the, uh, the targeting icon to show where we want to start. Or we could just go to the course menu as well. And that's going to bring them all up. So... Once we're in this, of course, you have tabs down the left-hand side, and many of these you have tabs across the top. Let's go up to the very top. We'll look at our basic settings. Uh, you could change wages, repair options, fuel thresholds, broken stuff. Like, you get the options on the right. It tells you exactly what each one of these does, so you just have to read them and figure out what it does. Uh, there are some other user settings as well. I'm currently not using the expert mode. Maybe we'll get into that eventually. We're still trying to get through most of the basic features of course play. There are quite a few options on this, like we said. Uh, we look quickly at the vehicle settings. Uh, we have a couple different options here. 
You can raise and lower tools early or late, depending on what you want to do. If for some reason it's not getting through an entire field, maybe you can take a look at those settings. Um, so you got your harvester settings down below, and then some debug settings, which you shouldn't have to worry about those for now. Uh, also, let's go down to the next one, because as we get down here, there's we're going to skip the, the map. This one here is where your courses get saved in here. So if you're making courses and you decide to save some, well, you're going to have big folders, put some courses in them and maybe save them for later to, to pull them back up again. This can be helpful if you're using like multiple combines or planning on doing the same field with the same equipment over and over and over again. But uh, this is where you're gonna find all that. And of course the bottom one is already the menu we talked about. All right, let's go into our main map. This is probably the one you're going to spend most of your time in because this is where you generate your jobs. So you can see we have the map. Our harvester is sitting just off to the side of the field. We're going to, well, assign them the field position. We want it to be starting right there. That's where the field is. That's the field I want to work. Now, I could simply hit generate field work right now and it will generate a job, but I don't know what the settings are currently set up for this. It's probably just gonna go up and down the whole time. Yes, it would have because we had no headland set and I wouldn't mind having some headlands just so it has a bit more space to get around. So we, as soon as we select that, all of a sudden we're getting some headland options to set up on here. So if we just did one, uh, that would be just whatever, how many, how many rounds you want to go around the field, just like the base GPS in game. We'll set it to, I don't know, we'll see me three, keep it simple for now. And we're going to start the work on our headlands. You can start on the center if you would like, just like the GPS as well. Also with this, now you can take a look at and figure out how sharp you need to turn. So, uh, if you want the corners rounded, you could increase these numbers right along here. So corner radius. Five is kind of the lowest. If you go up to 15, the radius becomes a little less. Uh, headline directions, you could change clockwise or counterclockwise, which is kind of a nice option as well, to be honest. Uh, what else do we have? We keep on scrolling down, field center, center direction, even row. Once again, all of these guys, if you have a little, if, you, if it doesn't quite make sense, right? So if we go even row width, reduces the working width to achieve an even distribution across all lanes. So that's kind of a nice little feature if you want to activate some of these, if you're trying to figure out what some of these do. Uh, you've got skip rows, of course, once again. So if you have multiple pieces of equipment working at the same time, you can use the skip rows, which is similar to the AI, only this is a little bit more intuitive, I find. And then you have some island bypasses stuff at the bottom as well. Once again, all of these, like I said, have little descriptions on what each one of these do. Um, also, you'll notice across the top, there's vine settings. There's vine settings now. So you can do stuff with your grapes if you want to in course play. I'm not going to get into that today, though. So anyways, that's our main settings for our field work. Uh, we've set up how I kind of want to run it with three headlands. We're doing headlands first. Very simple change. Let's go back to our map. Generate job. Let's go generate that field work. It's going to think for a second as it tries to figure it out. There we go. So that's what it figures we're going to do. You can see the corners are done. That. Let's actually mess with that quickly. If we go back in and if I make my quarter radius up to, let's go to 15. We're going to go all the way up as high as we can go. There we go. And we'll go back to our map. We can generate the field work right here, but I want to see the mini map. So we'll do that. Generate the course. Does it change it much? We'll see if this if it changes it. It did a little bit there. There we go. So you can see how the radius there is definitely way, way more uh into the into the middle of the field, and we're missing a bunch on the outside. So that's kind of what that's that setting's changing. Um obviously I want it as less the least amount as possible, I guess I would say, as we go back to it. And yeah, so now we're a little bit deeper. We're still gonna miss a little bit but that is a better setting, I personally believe. All right, so we're good to go there. You can see this is our start point. This is where we're going to end. So we're gonna start right where we kind of parked the, the, the harvester. And at the end, we'll be down at the bottom. You can plan things out that way. Now, all I gotta do guys is hit this start job button and our combine is already starting to work. So as I back out, we're running. Now, you come back into this menu, you can see we are currently running. Temporary course, uh, it is currently 0.1 or 1 of 13 and 1320. So what that means is if we take a look at our, oh, is that gonna bring that up? Let's see if we can see that from a little better angle. There we go. All of these little nodes that go around the field on these lines now. So this button on the icons will bring up all of the, the pathing that you have set up as you cycle through it. Each one of these nodes, of course, represents one number. We have 1320 to go through and we're 25 in, but that means we're also getting an estimated time it's going to take for us to harvest this field, which is gonna be one hour and five minutes. It's gonna take a hot minute to get through this, isn't it? So we're gonna let this go, but that is the basics for setting up a course play for, well, any kind of basic stuff from harvesting to planting to cultivating, whatever it might be. 
field work, essentially, right? Simple field work and course play, which is the majority of stuff we're going to use this for, let's be honest. But you can, like I said, you can set up multiple pieces of equipment going at the same time with this. You just need to set it up a little bit differently. This is very the straightforward one piece of equipment in a field at a time. So let's talk about another feature of course play. Of course, we have our combine uh, running, getting our peas right now. But we are carting right now, and you can have course play cart for you now as well, relatively easily. As soon as we jumped into the field here, you can see that course play is recognizing this and saying, "Hey, guess what? You have an unload combine course play setup. Good to go. I have not had to select any of this now." I did change the offset a little bit because, quite honestly, we'll move it a little bit more, actually. Uh, we'll set that over so there's a little bit more space because the pea, com the pea harvester is a little bit on the small side as far as the uh, the auger, the, the belt goes. As soon as I hit play, it's going to wait for this combine to unload. Now, I'm waiting for it to unload at 100%, so I want it to be full. You can change that so it could go to it when it's at 95 per se. Also, I've changed that combine so that it only it will go all the way to 100% and stop. It will not keep on harvesting, uh, or it will not wait for me and then start harvesting once we, we drive up along beside it. Obviously, that's not going to work with our current system. It's too close to it. Uh, with a regular harvester, though, it might work out just fine. So it looks like he's pretty much done over there. We'll see if this automatically connects. As he backs up, he's trying to make a little bit of space. You should hear the tractor fire up here in just a second as we make a drive over to it. Once he stops, I'm assuming it should be fired up. There we go waited for the right opportunity and now we're good to go and we're gonna go unload with him he's gonna drive over and take care of this all on its own now like i said i had to set the offset i hope we have it enough uh i'm 1.3 meters to the left so it should move over a little bit further hopefully we're within the range still but the oxbow doesn't have the ex the biggest belt here or the biggest uh the biggest pipe like most harvesters would let's see how we do are we close enough i don't think oh yeah we are there we go looks like it's gonna load perfect all right once again now i've changed it down to 95 percent i am driving harvester obviously now it should stop right when he goes to unload oh boy don't run into me though can we change the angle of this it looks a little close oh there we go perfect there we go so your pea harvesters your spinach um the green beans you're going to have to work with it a little bit. Your com your standard harvesters, though, guys, they should work just fine. Uh, you'll just have to figure out exactly... Well, if it, if it needs to move away from the header is going to be the only problem. All right, let's work on another feature that Course Play is really good with. Uh, we're going to... Well, we're going to bail this field up. Let's uh, jump in the Mac Don here. From here, we're going to set up Course Play just like we did previously. Some straightforward field work. Uh, it should be good to go. Field position set up. And let's see what our... Her headlands are saying we'll do four headlands. Sure, why not? Back that up. Generate our course. And let's uh, get going. Start job. Perfect. All right. So the McDonald will go up. And it'll start doing uh, all the, the, the swathing on this field. And uh, we'll pull one behind just shortly here. All right. So swathers made a decent dent over in that field. Let's, let's follow in behind. We'll start raking it up. And then uh, right behind that, we'll be bailing that grass right behind. So let's get across the road here. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Perfect. We'll unfold the rake and let's set up our course while we're here. So once again, we have field 45. Of course, I'm going to set up, make sure we do, yeah, let's just do one headland. We'll start on the headlands this time. Go back to our map and generate our course. Perfect. So we got our one headland and then from there, it looks like we're going to go through the middle all the way down to the stop. Perfect. Great. We'll start that course up. And we'll go back out and watch as we go. Now, from here, guys, I'm going to copy this course with a button down at the bottom. Now, temporary course has been copied. Perfect. Now, jumping over into our white, we've got the case uh, baler right behind it. I can simply take that copied course, copy it over to our tractor, and say, you know what? Let's go. We'll run that. I don't have to do anything else. It's going to run the exact same course that we just copied over from the last tractor and uh, yeah, do the exact same thing. Once it finds it, it's got to find it first, of course. There we go. It actually missed the first couple of spots. That's okay. It started at number like 18, you think you saw there. And now it's good to go and it'll start making bales for us. Look at that. Like perfectly. I love this. So with course play, you can now bale your fields. You don't have to have, uh, you can hire workers to do all this. We can jump on out and all good to go. We've got three pieces of equipment running in this field. I get to just supervise and make sure everyone's doing their job correctly, but that's all there is to it, guys. Isn't that great? Gotta love it. So that there is the basics of course play. That is the basics of all the basic features of course play. There's a lot more you can still do with it, 
maybe check back we'll be able to do a video on some of the more i don't know in-depth features of course play at a later date but if you guys enjoyed this one drop a like if you did don't forget to subscribe and of course you can find the link to course play the github link down in the description uh, that should be the most up-to-date version regardless of when you find that that one there is the one that gets updated all the time so make sure you get it from that site there anyways check that out and we'll catch you guys in the next one please don't run me over nice we'll see you guys in the next one this is clutch over and out